It's probably one of the most common and oftentimes frustrating skills on the trombone for any young trombonist, still growing trombonists, even myself. I'm experienced, yet it's something that I still work on every day. Um, so today's video is basically going to be talking about how I build my range, how I continue to work towards uh, bigger and better things in that aspect of trombone playing. Um, and I just hope to share some of those skills with y'all and hopefully you will learn something from this. So there is a short answer to this and it basically comes down to three things, your air, your strength, and your relaxation, all right? That alone is not enough to, you know, really quite understand uh, how to play higher and how to play lower. So I'll elaborate a little bit. Air is probably w definitely the most important thing uh, in playing trombone, period. So if you're a trombone student, I I'm sure you have uh, breathing exercises that you should be doing um, on a daily basis, if not a daily basis, pretty often throughout the week. Um, it's all to build your lung capacity, all to build your air strength, all to build the solidity of your air stream when you play. The strength that I'm talking about is not necessarily your body strength. It's about your playing strength and your embouchure strength. Of course, playing every day is going to naturally build your embouchure and that will make it stronger. But when you're starting out, it's not going to be that strong because you're not used to using these muscles. Um, you know, not as used to using them as someone who plays trombone every day for 10 years is going to, you know, 10 or 20 years, etc. Obviously, it, it, it gets better with time. But how, how to be efficient with it, you know, how, how to do it in the least amount of time possible. That's why we're all here. That's why we're all playing this instrument. That's why we're all playing any instrument. That's, you know, musicianship is all about efficiency, um, making music as easily as possible so you can be as expressive as possible. The last thing is relaxation. Now this is the mo second most important thing, obviously, to air. Um, you want to stay relaxed. If you have tension in your body, unnecessary tension in your body, that is, uh, there is such thing as necessary tension. Uh, if you have unnecessary tension in your body, then it's, it's going to just really hinder your playing and it'll create some really bad habits. I speak from experience. Um, I used to have this problem where I would be articulating far too hard to where I'd get really sore right here uh, from the tongue muscle, just overworking because I wasn't using enough air. So really it all comes down to how much air are you taking in, how much air are you putting out, how solid is that air? Because the air is not only going out the instrument, through the instrument, but as you probably know, if you're maybe in a marching band, the air goes throughout the rest of your body. My band director always stressed that. Um, you need to be taking in more air so that the rest of it can uh, not only go through your instrument, but also fuel your, mus fuel, uh, fuel your muscles. So let's talk a little bit about what I do. This is daily. Remember, this is, uh, this is a daily thing. Um, of, of course, you know, daily routines are important. Uh, if you need to take a day off, I, <laughs> that is okay. Like, uh, I, I don't want to be the kind of person that's telling you, you have to practice daily or you're bad. No, that's not the case. Uh, because if you're practicing daily and it starts becoming a hindrance to your health, hindrance to your playing, then it's not the most efficient anymore. Sometimes it's more efficient to take a day off than it is to play that day and feel really bad about it. That being said, first thing I do every day is long tones. All right. Breathing uh, comes before that. Yes. But playing wise, um, long tones. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a, of a long tone thing. Um, and I'll demonstrate it for you, um, but the short version of it, because I don't want to take up too much of your time. So take the mouthpiece, uh, I'll play a B flat. Okay, now do this on the mouthpiece first, and then play it. You do long tones, Remington style, all the way down to an F. I'm not 
completely warmed up. Um, that was a little bit shaky. Your ideal sound is to get a good solid airstream from B flat all the way down to F in the longest gliss, i.e. like this. Now whether that means taking a break uh, to have a sip of water or just taking this gliss a little bit slower, whatever it needs uh, to make it sound the best, that is the goal here. So do it on the horn. Continuing on, I know you're probably thinking, this is mid-range. Well, where's, where's the extreme highs, where are the extreme lows? You gotta start in the middle. You gotta start where it's comfortable and build outwards. So continuing from there, I take the next partial down, start on an F, go down all the way to a C, and then do the same for the partial below that. Do the same for the partial below that in the triggers register now. It's a little shaky down there because C is really hard to play on a tenor trombone, but that's why we work on it. That's why we get it more solid. Go to the partial below that. This is not just going from B flat to F. This is not just going from F to C. This is doing every uh, interval in between. So you're doing. I'm just condensing the exercise for the sake of timeliness. Okay, one more below that. I'm still working. I still get a little bit lightheaded. Um, that is just, it's very hard, especially on this instrument. Uh, it is a tenor trombone, not a bass trombone. Uh, so things get a little bit tough down there. Now uh, let's go the opposite direction. Let's slide upwards. Okay. Uh, for low range in my practice, what I do is that uh, smaller intervals and extending to larger intervals, uh, increasing uh, the direction downwards. All right. <clears throat> now, I do a little bit of a wider uh, extension upwards, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, I start on the F. So, take on the mouthpiece, and I go up a B-flat um, arpeggio starting on an F. So, we go, So, do, do, mi, mi, so. The biggest thing here, of course, uh, apart from air, it, air will never stop being the most important thing. You want to make sure that your embouchure is stable. I used to have this issue uh, when I was not not too much younger. Literally, last year is when I started experiencing this, and two years ago, uh, two years ago is when I started, but it, it persisted for about a year, year and a half. So it, it's um, very important you don't let your embouchure move. All right, I used to do this thing where I'd go. And notice now my mouthpiece is basically touching my nose. Um, my mouth is all the way down at the bottom part of my mouthpiece. That's not good. You want to keep it, uh, I think the magic number is like 60-40. And by that I mean 60%. Um, uh, ideally you have 50% of the top of the mouthpiece. How do I say this? Your lips, your embouchure is directly halfway into your mouthpiece. Um, but if it's a little bit lower, a little bit higher, so that the, the ratio of mouthpiece uh, on the bottom to the top is like 60-40 or 60-40, um, that's okay too. Um, we're all different. Our physiology is always different. Um, so it just depends on the player, what is more comfortable. Um, obviously, you gotta, you, you gotta do what sounds best and what is most healthy for your body. 
So. <laughs> hit a F at that uh, that partial yet, that is okay. Do some shorter glisses like this. If you want to go past that, until more things become doable. That's where the strength comes in. The more you do these glisses upwards and downwards, the more strength you're gonna get in your embouchure that is going to help you go extremes in more directions. Now, the final extreme glisses that I do at the end of this little uh, long tone exercise, this is the beginning of my day, by the way. Do not neglect range exercises until later in your day. You wanna do them right when you start playing, otherwise it's not gonna be as consistent. Uh, you just need to do them in different contexts, i.e. if you're working on uh, building your range, of course that comes later in the day, but you want to do what you can do in all extremes of your register very, very first thing you do in the day. So the last thing I do in this long tone exercise is very high range. So, yeah. <laughs> It's still not easy for me, but I have to do it every day so that it becomes easy for me. Um, what I'm focusing in on, uh, this might help you, is engaging my core muscles. Uh, again, if you're in marching band, I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, engaging your core muscles, that is the kind of necessary tension that we need uh, in trombone playing because it, st it stabilizes your upper body uh, into a very good posture and a very solid airstream so that it goes out. Uh, I had a voice teacher once tell me that your body is like a big pipe. It goes up and out. And that's how you should think of your air, when you're singing at least. I don't know how much that applies to trombone playing, but maybe it will help you. Let's try this again. extent of my register. It goes all the way from that F. Down there. Now, the next thing that I would recommend for building range, um, first off, get some range books. I mean, these, these are good exercises. These are pretty common sense exercises. Um, but I mean, if you don't have a teacher and you're, you're self-studying, I highly recommend some type of book, uh, some type of daily routine book uh, to help you uh, get some more exercises and get some more variety into your playing so that you can build your uh, skills more naturally. Um, that's why we have these books. I mean, there are some great trombone players that have put together these books for us to learn, for us to do what they do. Um, that being said, Remember what I said about playing range in context? Well, here we go. If you're working on maybe an articulation slash accuracy type exercise, then you want to do some octave leaps uh, or maybe some fifth leaps. So uh, an exercise that is in my teacher's book is uh, this. You start on a high B flat. Consistency of air, not moving your embouchure uh, in between the registers, because in an actual playing content uh, context, if you have these long leaps, you're gonna have to do them like that. You don't have time to switch your embouchure. Uh, that's why it's really important to build the strength of your embouchure to be able to switch between those things. All right, uh, you can obviously extend this further. Um, you can go start lower and go higher. <laughs>
Um, if you're building range specifically, uh, and I'm sure you've heard this before, especially if you have a teacher, um, I believe this is something in one of uh, Christopher's Bill, Christopher Bill's range videos. Um, yeah, so go check that out if you haven't. Uh, but uh, scale exercises without tongue. Here's an example. <laughs> until it becomes strained. Uh, you do not want to strain yourself. Um, this can get hard, but remember that you're not using your muscles to do this. The strength I talk about is of course in your lip muscles, but that comes naturally. You don't want to focus on that. This is just a, a natural thing that happens over time. And my emphasis is on the fact that you need to be doing it often. Uh, we all need to be doing it often. I need to be doing it often. Um, and that's why we have things like daily routines uh, <clears throat> and exercises like this. All right. Um, on that note, there are just no shortcuts to this kind of thing. Because if you take a shortcut, it's oftentimes going to lead to some bad habits in your playing later on. All right. Um, so no tongue. We talked about that. Um, well, you want to add a little bit of tongue, right? Like I said, Practicing low and high range uh, in uh, oh oh low low range. This this also works in low range. You can do scales downward. So it works in both directions. Um, the idea behind not using a tongue is to focus on your constant airstream. But when you do add tongue, do something like a flow study. I highly recommend uh, this book, Flow Studies, by, um, I believe it's Vining, David Vining. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Let me check that out so I don't get it wrong. Yes, it is David Vining. He also has a breathing book, which is very good. But I use this. Uh, it has a rotation of flow studies for each day of the week. And uh, this is not a sponsored video, by the way. Um, I just recommend this uh, material. Um, lots of good stuff in here. Uh, you can use these flow studies. Um, they're all in the mid range uh, to like a little bit of high range. Like it goes up to maybe a G sometimes. I think that's about as high as it goes. But you know, you want to breathe in, uh, bring in some other techniques. Let's say you do one of the exercises and maybe tenor clef to work on a higher register. So, let's see what that looks like. So that's when we bring out the mouthpiece and buzz it. And so there you can hear some uh, inconsistencies between the intervals. Uh, so that's something I need to work on. Uh, that's another thing about this type of practice. You need to listen to yourself. And you need to notice the things that are wrong. Because if you don't and you continue playing like you are, you're just never going to fix those problems and you're going to develop bad, bad habits. Uh, recording yourself helps a lot. Uh, honestly, that's a lot of why I started this YouTube channel, um, to record myself more, uh, especially in an ensemble setting. So, a little interesting fun fact there. Uh, same thing works, maybe you can read them down an octave. So, it starts on the B flat, make it lower. So that's all I'll say on that matter, um, and I believe that's all I'll say on range uh, in general. So if you took away anything from this video, 
make it those three things. Uh, when you're practicing range, make sure you have good solid air. Make sure that you're doing it often enough to build your embouchure uh, to where it is strong without you trying to make it strong. That is a very important distinction. You don't want to force anything. And you always want to stay relaxed. And those last two go hand in hand together. You want to build strength without forcing it. So that's where you stay relaxed. But um, keeping the tension on your body means keeping tension out of your neck, your shoulders, uh, your back, your legs, uh, your face. You get all scrunched up when you play high. Um, but you can still keep uh, your core engaged. I think that's still a good, um, a good skill to have. So, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, uh, like the video, and if you want more content, uh, go over to the Discord. Uh, I have two social media accounts, Instagram and Twitter, so follow those. All the links will be in the description. And subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, that's where you'll get uh, things like videos early, access to arranging streams, etc. I have a video explaining all of those on my channel. If you haven't watched that already, go ahead and go watch that. I thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.